Hi, welcome to Classic Car Cave. So this will be part two of the Morris Thousand uh, Clutch Saga. I want to call it a, a saga because uh, this has been a kind of custom uh, clutch that's been put together. It's not the original Morris Thousand box. Uh, um, it, the bell housing is the only part of the gearbox which is uh, original to the car. The gearbox and the tail shaft is from a Ford Sierra. Um, which I had no idea you could actually combine together uh, with not, without spaces, without anything. I have in my XK150, I have a Tremac T5 box which has the original XK150 bell housing but you have to put a spacer in between the gearbox itself and, and, the, uh, uh, and the bell housing. But, so I'm doing this intro before we start tomorrow morning on the car. Uh, just to show you a few things. So the owner of the car, Bernard, is a good friend of mine. Um, he's been speaking to somebody who did this, uh, has done this conversion. They've done it in a slightly different way. Now, my, if you've watched part one, which I hope you have, uh, this is a was an homemade uh, DIY homemade um, fork arm for the release bearing. And you can see it's pretty chunky. It's a pretty chunky piece of material. Um, and my feeling is, is what's happened is, is the the uh, geometry of this is is wrong, and what 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 that is doing is not pushing the bearing, the release bearing into the fingers of the pressure plate, um, so that it's so that it's uniformed. I think it's kind of pushing a bit of an angle, and consequently, this is where the wear has come from on the on the fingers, which you'll see. So the idea is not to use this, not to have a fork arm at all. And what we would do is change it for this system, which is obviously we change this main cap, which holds the main bearing in uh, on the on the first motion on the on the on the shaft into the uh, spigot bearing, and then this piece comes with it. This is basically a hydraulic slave, so you can see there's a bearing on it there, which I can take off, and under there is a slave. And there's the there's the hydraulic fitting on top. So the idea is is that you use the same master cylinder, take out the slave that was operating the fork, put the line into here inside the gearbox, and then push the this slave, uh, which has got a piston in it, backwards and forwards, and that will operate the uh, which will operate the clutch. Uh, the problem is is we don't know quite at the moment. We, I've been told from Bernard that the guy that did this uh, kit or had it made or came up with the idea is it's going to need a three mil spacer between here and here. Now fortunately that shoulder is four, four mil so it will still leave one mil inside but we need to make a three mil shim to go from here to here so it needs to be stood off at that kind of distance if you like just inside and we hope that that will be the right distance but we'll check it out first. So I'll probably come back at the end of this video whether we're successful or not it, it will be uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, but I'll go through it and everything we, we're doing to make this conversion work and hopefully the pedal is far great far better than it was because the strength you needed to push the pedal down to push the clutch down was was enormous. Anyway I hope you'll watch right the way through and see what we end up doing. Right, so that's the flywheel back on. Uh, the uh, talk top and the lock tabs are over. It's got a new uh, spigot bearing in it. Obviously this is clutch or flywheel side. Put that back in. So that's the clutch alignment tool. There's plastic one, but it'll do the job. So this one's got a bit of a spacer on it, and apparently, according to Bernard, that spacer is on it because this clutch plate is uh, slightly thicker, and that's why they put this little one mil spacer on it, which is very unusual. I've never seen that before. Anyway, so we'll put the uh, pressure plate on it. The idea behind this, before I make the spacer for the bell housing or for the throw, is I want to check the distance from the back of the bell housing 
to the end of the pressure plate, and that'll tell us as long as you've gone in the ballpark of the uh, of the slave working, the internal slave working. So I'll bring it back when I've got the pressure plate on. So I uh, got it all back on. So that's the, the slave cylinder itself. I've put a packer in there of three mil, which I think is to take up that space, and I'll show you what I mean. Uh, unfortunately, you can't put these hoses on before you put the bell housing on. There's not enough room. I thought you maybe could, or one at least. Uh, but we have to take them both out. The other problem is, is that bolt won't go in with this in place, and this one it won't. They won't go over both of them. So, so this will be the feed line into the slave here, which will go onto the onto the master cylinder, and then this one here will be the the bleed line. Obviously, it's as close to the top as I can get it. So it's coming in the bottom. Unfortunately, because it's three, uh, this is. Yeah, it'd be better if it was right on top, but it should bleed all the air out of that. So that's it all done. Everything's nice and tight again now. Uh, everything's gasketed back up. So it's uh, really a guy. All we have got now is sort of borrowed this uh, uh, transmission stand off uh, Bernard. I don't have one. I don't know why. It's nice, so I'll set it in that cradle. All right, yeah, so my thinking is with this is that what we've done is, is we've taken a measurement across there. I'll put it to one side so you can see it better with a nice shadow. And the depth between those fingers and that plate, the, the, the outside of the plate, is like three mil. So I think that's where the three mil spacers come into play. I think what they've done is, is they've measured those fingers when it wasn't pressurised on the, onto the friction plate and that's why they've put the three mil spacer in it to take up that room. We will see. Okay, so can you operate it? Yeah. So there you can see the clutch in, out, in, out. And you see it pushing the pressure plate really nicely. Okay, so you can operate it? On, off, on, off. That looks good. That looks really good. Nice feel. You can do it. That's with your hand. So that's with his hand burner, not with his foot. So you can see how nice that is. So we need to work out where we're going to put this bleed line here. We'll put it in such a place that you can... But the box was an absolute bastard to get in. We had to, we had to virtually turn it upside down uh, to get it in. And then we had to wrench over the engine to get to to get it to turn. But I was going to give up and take the fucking engine out, but we got it. So there you go. It, it works nice. So there we go. Okay, guys. Uh, just a complete disaster. Got to take the gearbox and everything back out again. The uh, You can see the piston there. Hopefully you can see it. It's weeping there. We uh, we had we had a clutch, a little bit of a clutch. There was still air in the line. We had a bit of, bit of a clutch. We could put it into gear, move it forward, backwards, go through the gears. So we tried to bleed it again. And uh, unfortunately, I shouldn't be laughing, but unfortunately um, it's blown the seal out. So that piston can't be very long. And what it's done is it's bypassed. You can just see the drips right where the piston is onto the onto the pressure plate there. And it just completely blew out. I just put my foot on it and it went straight to the floor. So it must be right on the edge of the seal. And the, the, I just hope it hasn't fucked the seal up as well. But it means the whole box has to come back out. And we filled it up with gear oil, of course, before we started it. So now that we've got to drain that bastard off. And half the ancillary is in the engine bay. Uh, it's just a... I can't show you because it's up in the air, but... Oh, I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll bring it down and show you. Inside the normal Morris 1000, you can see it's got the two inch and a quarters on it. And if I, if I can show you, oh, maybe I can. Oh, I'm going to do it there. Look at this, look at this fuel bowl here. That's good. That one's good. It's shit. But this, that's good. Look at this one here. This is unbelievable. Yeah. 
hole somewhere. Look at, look at this one here. You can see the fuel bowl. I'll just hold the, the hose. Watch this. Unbelievable. So, to get this out, you have to take the starter motor out completely. You can see it buried down there at the bottom. So to get that starter motor out, you have to take off that uh, so that support bar, that support bracket onto the engine support, the engine steady. You have to take the uh, coil off off the bulkhead. Uh, you got to take the cap off the distributor and the rotor arm, uh, and it's so tight to get in there. And it's because of this; it's, it's got this servo system in there, which wouldn't normally be in that. It'd all be open normally to the chassis. And then you have to wrench that over to get that starter out. And it's not as though you can actually just leave it in place because it's actually in the way when you try to put it on. It's so tight under there. And and, and we've completely put it all back together. You can see it's all been regasketed. And uh, and I have to take the bell house and not just get the end, the box out again, but I've got to take the bell housing off to re re um, put a new seal in that uh, slave as well. Just unbelievable. Anyway, that's where we're at, and I'll give you an update when, as and when.